So welcome back everyone to part two of our image classification tutorial. After having looked at the feature space and the refresher on spectral response curves in part one, we'll move on to conducting an unsupervised classification of this image. Zoom out to the full extent again. See that, that our scene here, Worldview 2 image covering the city of Darwin. Bear in mind that we're looking at a true color composite. I'm displaying, in this case, the red band in the red channel, green band in the green channel, blue band in the blue channel. If we wanted to make a false color composite, we don't have an embedded profile like we do with Sentinel-2 images. So we need to manually place that near-infrared band into red red to green and green to blue that'll give us the false color composite which really brings out the photosynthetically active vegetation shown in sh shades of red here and as we come in we can see some more detail particularly in these mangrove areas you can see more contrast between these drainage lines and the slightly higher elevation areas so, um, what also stands out nicely are these green fields around the racetrack, some of the sports fields, lots of um, sports fields and parks in Darwin's suburbs. Now, we had said earlier that we'd look at four primary um, areas of classification first, land, well, the water, uh, green vegetation, bare soil, and infrastructure. So bearing in mind that an unsupervised classification is often only a first step in a real classification, and we conduct it for learning purposes. It tells us how difficult our task is going to be, and it can often highlight areas of potential confusion. So to perform a classification, we head up to raster, classification, unsupervised classification, and for today we'll be using the k-means cluster analysis. A few things to keep in mind, and we have two tabs, um, like with most of the windows, and very importantly there's a help button. If you click on help, it will bring up a description of what the k-means classifier is really doing. And in this case, it is a cluster analysis. Partitioning of a data set into subsets, clusters or classes, so that the data in each subset ideally share some common trait, often proximity according to some defined distance measure. Importantly, this proximity is, is not geographic, it's not in physical space, it's proximity within the feature space. So, if you go through these menus, you can also have a look at the other uh, classification options that are available. To run the k-means classifier, we click on our input output parameters tab. We define our source product, which is our primary image. We're going to generate a target. It automatically uses the same file name, but adds underscore k-means onto the end. It's good practice to make use of underscores and not spaces in your file names. We're going to save it as a beam dimap, which is the snap format, and then choose your output directory. For processing parameters, we will set the number of clusters that we want the software to divide the image up into. And we said that we were interested in four categories. So let's see if that will work. Um, other options here is that we need to select the source bands that we're going to include in the classifier. If we don't have too many, we might as well include them all. We have the option of adding a region of interest mask. That is, if we had an area defined and we only wanted to work within that area, we could pull up that shapefile here. And then finally, we can click 
run. The algorithm will start writing that target product. So remember that we're running a clustering approach and that it's searching for pixels that share commonalities within the feature space. So basically it's trying to define four homogeneous categories based on the reflectance values from all of those bands that we have selected. That will take a little while to run. And when it's done, this little dialog will pop up telling me that the file has been written and has been opened in Snap. Gives us the total processing time, 40 seconds on a MacBook. We can say OK, and we can close that. Now you'll see we have a new product in our Product Explorer labeled number two, and it's our k-means result. Let's click on that down arrow and have a look. We have just one band in the bands folder. Before we open that, let's just close the false color composite. So we have just the true color composite open. Now let's double click the class indices and see what pops up. So this is our, claim, our k means cluster result. Um, it's four categories and to make things a bit easier to see, we can use this color manipulation tab over here that's next to the navigation pane to these purples to blues are a bit hard to distinguish so we can change them to more distinct colors. Now we can see those four classes. What I'd like you to do is go up to window and choose tile vertically and in your navigation pane just make sure that these bottom two icons are active. That will synchronize the extents and the cursor positions between the two images. Let's zoom in to actual pixel level and start browsing around the image. So click and drag the window on the bottom left. That'll move the image around on the right hand side. As we go through, we can see some areas that seem to have classified quite well and some that haven't. For example, if we go out over the ocean, so all the yellow colors, the almost white, see it's classified water very well. It's picked up some of those boats. As we head over land, it looks like this class of red is picking up houses and infrastructure. But we do have some problems. If we head over to the airport, for example, we can see that these runways, the bitumen tarmac surfaces, have been classified in the same class as water. Uh, at first it would seem that that doesn't make sense, but if we pull up our spectrum view again and have a look at spectral properties of the tarmac, see that it actually is very similar to water, um, although there's definitely more of a, st a stronger reflectance in the blue and green channels over water. But nonetheless, the runway is more similar to water than to either bare ground or green vegetation. So that's why it get, got lumped in with the water class. Um, also worth noting is that over the, the national park here, we have a number of different categories. It seems to have highlighted the mangrove areas quite well in the, in the yellow in this case. You can see this, even though you can't see it in the true color image, you can see these fringes of these little drainage lines. It's likely to be different species to what's found in the middle. Infrastructure-wise, many of the houses have come out in this red color, um, but it also looks like there's some confusion among some areas. And then looking at the bare ground, which 
It's colored purple in my case. And remember that these colors depend, depend on what colors you've chosen here. Be aware that depends very much on which of the two windows you are actively clicked in to what color manipulation options you see. Bear in mind that when you click in an image, you, the active image gets this yellow halo around it. And that's what will be mapped in these other windows. If I click now in this window, we get back to this four class system. Um, also worth noting is that we get some frequency statistics. So class one occupies 39% of our image, class two, 37%, class 3, 20%, class 4, only 2%. So let's close that. Um, it's interesting, but not overly useful. Um, looks promising for distinguishing water, at least. And there is definitely some confusion. But it, the important thing is that this step helps us target areas that need more attention. And in this case, distinguishing water from uh, the tarmac is a key one. So how can we refine that? Obviously, adding in some better training data, actual fields or ground verif verified training data would help. But that would move us into supervised image classification, which is the topic of our next tutorial. For now, what we can try is dividing this up further into more classes. So we only provide, we restricted the number of classes to four. So that limits the options of what can be um, produced. So let's repeat that step and run another unsupervised k-means cluster analysis. But let's ah, just be careful here. You'll see that because I've had that image highlighted, I've only got class indices as the source band. So let's close that. Make sure to click back on the original image. Raster, classification, unsupervised classification, k-means cluster analysis. Now we have all those bands um, as options again. I want to increase the number of clusters to seven. And I'm going to call this one k-means two. That's our second attempt at the k-means clustering. The input image is that primary image. And let's highlight all these bands again and run that a second time. So all that we've changed now is that instead of just requesting a breakdown into four homogeneous um, pixels, we've now asked it to find seven groupings of pixels. And possibly by adding these extra classes, we'll be able to separate out some more features. So let's see how that turns out. The first image took 40 seconds to write. Now we're asking it for more classes. So it'll take a little bit longer. And once it's done, this dialog pops up telling us that the target product has been successfully written and took 48 seconds that time, so a little bit longer. Let's say OK and close. Now we can open up. We'll see that the third product has been added, K means 2. And if we open up that image, um, let's have a look. We see that there are now more classes and we see that in our color manipulation tab over here on the left too. And at first look, it's definitely captured the water well. If we zoom in a bit and have a look at that airport region, we'll see that indeed the tarmac, especially the primary runway, is now a different class to water, but we still have some confusion, particularly in these darker tarred surfaces. They're still being confused with water. We're well, not confused with water because 
this stage is not a classification, it's a, it's a clustering of like pixels together. So what I really mean to say is that these pixels are being grouped as having the same type of spectral response as water does. Um, so still not perfect, but better. We see streets separated. We see a bit more detail coming out in the in the swamps by adding in that extra class. Might want to again play with some of these colors to really highlight some of these differences by choosing different color options. But in this case, what we can also see is that we seem to have lost some detail in the mangrove swamp. So if we just go back to the k-means cluster that we first did using only four classes and zoom in again, we see that we have, if we were interested in mapping mangroves, this one is probably a better result than what we've produced here by adding in more classes. So this illustrates that unsupervised classification is quite complex and it's hard to know exactly what those outputs are going to be. We need to remember that it's a statistical approach breaking up the image into areas of like similar pixels. So what I want to illustrate here is that this is really a learning procedure. We need to play with a number of classes and we need to take the information from this stage and apply it in our next stage, which would be supervised classification. What we've seen here is that there's areas that need more attention. So now when we're going to choose training areas, we know that we need to focus on especially some of these darker impervious surfaces and collect decent training sites to separate them from water. We also know that within the National Park down here, we would want to spend some time being careful to select areas within here that can help us differentiate from these different vegetation types. So that's it for part two. In the next session, we will move on to supervised classification. That's accessed from the same menu, classification, supervised classification. We have five different options there. We will start with the random forest classifier. But the first thing we will do in the next exercise is build up our training database. So thanks very much and see you next week. Cheers.